a human body reduced to ash in minutes. Yet the newspaper next to it is untouched. It looks like magic or a supernatural curse. But the truth is a terrifying reality of physics. Today, we expose the science of the human candle. Welcome to the deep dive. Okay, so today we are diving deep into one of the um, most sensational myths in forensic history, spontaneous human combustion. Mm -hmm. You know the scene, right? A body is found almost completely consumed by fire. Right. But the room around it, mm -hmm. maybe a stack of newspapers or the TV remote on a table nearby, it's all strangely untouched. And that's the hook. The official definition calls it the nearly complete combustion of a living human being in the apparent absence of sufficient external fuel. That apparent absence is what we're here to tackle. Exactly. Our whole mission here is to just cut through the noise mm. because forensic science is uh, very clear on this. SHC is a pseudoscience. There are zero verified cases. So every single one has an explanation. Every single one. And it's a tragic fire death explained by a really powerful mechanism called the wick effect. That's a shortcut to understanding all of this. It's easy to see why the myth got started, though. I mean, you look at these historical cases. Oh, absolutely. Like in 1746, there was the Countess Cornelia Bandy. Her body was described as just a heap of ashes, mm. but her lower legs and and her stockings. They were completely untouched. That must have been baffling back then. It was. And then, you know, Charles Dickens puts it in his novel Bleak House. He has the character Mr. Crook die that way. And that really cemented it in the public mind. It did. But it also started a huge scientific fight. A critic named George Lewis basically called him out. He argued, you know, very fiercely that a human body just can't ignite like that. So who was right? Dickens or the critic? Well, that's the interesting part. They both were in a way. Dickens was right about what the strange evidence looked like. Yeah. But Lewis was right about the science. The fire does not and it cannot come from inside the body. Okay, so that's the central mystery. How do we get from Dickens's weird, ashy evidence to the scientific fact that you know, bodies don't just explode. And the answer is the wick effect. Or, as forensic experts really prefer to call it, fat wick burns. Fat wick burns. The best way to think about it is like an inside-out candle. It's a perfect analogy. An inside-out candle. <laughs> okay, break that down for me. Well, the fuel for this candle is the body's own adipose tissue, human body fat. It's incredibly energy-dense. Right, the wick. The wick is the victim's clothing, or maybe a blanket, or even the upholstery of the chair they're in. It draws up the melting fat through capillary action, just like a candle wick draws up wax. But the fire itself, where does that come from? It can't be spontaneous. Never. It always, always requires an external spark. A dropped cigarette is the most common, but it could be a match, an ember from a fireplace, anything. So it's not a huge inferno. No, not at all. It's a slow, smoldering fire. But because it's constantly being fed fuel by the rendering body fat, it creates this very intense, very localized heat over many, many hours. If you're finding this deep dive valuable, take a moment to subscribe to make it make sense. New topics are broken down every week. And the victim can't escape. Exactly. The victim is almost always incapacitated, maybe by alcohol, medication, a medical event. Something prevents them from reacting. That slow, localized burn? Yeah. That must be why we see such strange evidence, like the 1951 case of Mary Reeser. Mm. People call her the cinder lady. Uh, the classic case. Her body was almost entirely ashes, but investigators found her left foot completely intact, still wearing its slipper. How does that happen? The wick effect explains it perfectly. The fire is fueled by the fat concentrated in the torso and the thighs. When it burns through that fuel, it basically self-extinguishes. It just, it runs out of gas before it can get to the low fat extremities, like the foot. Wow. And this isn't just theory. A scientist, Dr. John DeHaan, proved it. He wrapped a pig carcass, which is a good proxy for a human body, in a blanket, ignited it for just a moment, and then let it burn. And what happened? It smoldered for over six and a half hours, fueled only by its own fat. And it created the exact same burn pattern. The torso was destroyed, but the lower limbs were intact. 
That's incredible. But what about the bones? I've read reports where they're described as a fine gray powder. That seems like it would require a furnace, not a small smoldering fire. That is the final piece of the puzzle, and it's biological. Research by Angie Christensen pointed out that the victim profile is often an elderly female with osteoporosis. Low bone density. Right. And that compromised porous bone structure requires far less heat to be completely calcined, to be turned into ash, than healthy, dense bone wood. So it's a perfect storm. It's not supernatural at all. Not even close. It's a highly specific and preventable set of factors. You have low mobility, high body fat, an incapacitating agent like pills or alcohol, and an external ignition source, usually smoking. So if we pull back for a second, this leads to a pretty logical question for you to think about. Mm. If spontaneous human combustion were real, I mean, truly random and spontaneous, why don't we see people bursting into flames while walking down the street or at a football game? or just sitting in a coffee shop. Exactly, the fact that literally all of these alleged cases share that same narrow profile, elderly, immobile, often obese, a smoker and alone, that proves it's a specific type of fire death. It's a tragic accident, not some random internal supernatural event. So the fire isn't supernatural. It's just a terrifying trick of physics. If you wanna know why the Bermuda Triangle is statistically a lie and the insurance secret that proves it, click right here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next deep dive.